60 likes? Huh. 14, 12? Wow. Okay. Subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. The SE versus the iPhone 10s Max, the opposite ends of the spectrum, like the cheapest iPhone you could get, the smallest versus the most giant, big screen, most premium, and you know the highest price iPhone you're going to be able to buy. So let's go ahead and boot this up in three, two, one, and see which one can get there first. Now, don't be surprised if the SE wins some of these tests because the iPhone 10s Max has been showing that it wasn't like perfectly optimized to be faster than other iPhones out of the start, as you've seen in my other speed tests. So maybe it needs a few updates before it's super, super fast, but we're going to see what's going on here. And the SE with the win, $1,000 less and about five or six seconds so faster to boot up than the 10s Max. I can hear it already. Well, it's not pushing that big screen with the 2K resolution. Da, 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 da. All right, guys. So testing Touch ID versus Face ID. This is first gen Touch ID on the SE. You can see pretty swift, pretty responsive. And this one still has that clicky home button. They did come out with a second gen, but it didn't seem to make that much of a difference. Kind of like this new face ID was just a slight bump over the first one. I haven't been noticing it to be extremely faster. It's more accurate, but I haven't noticed it to be too much faster. So let's check out face ID now. Okay, so let's just swipe and get into the device. It's a two-step process here. So you got to kind of look and swipe and you're in. So pretty fast there for face ID as well, but touch ID not bad for the SE either. So pretty good for both of them on the unlock times. All right, guys, so here we are at the application portion. This has an Apple A9 CPU, two gigabytes of RAM, Apple A12 Bionic, four gigabytes of RAM, both with Apple GPUs. This one has the 6S GPU, and this is the new four core GPU. iOS 12, the official stock version, no betas here going on. Let's go ahead and head into calculator, three, two, one. You can see, wow, that was pretty close, actually. I know that's not really gonna choke up the CPUs at all, though. Let's go into clock, and you can see that one was to, the iPhone 10s Max. Let's go into settings, three, two, one. And you can see pretty much the same there on settings. Let's go into Twitter, three, two, one. You can see Twitter is first for which phone? It's the iPhone SE first on Twitter. So, you know, th that was pretty shocking. The first third party app we go into and the SE for the win. Let's go into Snapchat, three, two, one. And you can see the SE slightly over the 10s Max. Now I do want to mention, I'm actually going to bring these together because the SE keeps sliding around. The 10s Max actually has a much smoother feeling touch response than the SE, but the SE still was a little faster. Let's go into Instagram and see which one can load Instagram first. This time to the 10s Max, scrolling about the same Instagram. Social media is great on either phone. Just one is much more viewable because it's a larger canvas in the iPhone 10s Max. But in terms of performance, pretty much identical here on both devices. Let's go into WhatsApp, three, two, one. And you can see WhatsApp does load first. It looked like for the SE coming home. Let's go into YouTube, three, two, one, and see which one can load this up first. And pretty close here, but it's the iPhone 10s Max it's going to trending. And let's scroll down. You could see once in the apps, pretty much the same exact performance on both. So you could probably give more credit to, you know, Apple keeping their iOS really well optimized for these devices more, say, than the hardware. Let's go into Prime Video 3, 2, 1. And you can see that Prime Video does load first for the iPhone 10s Max. Let's go into Amazon 3, 2, 1. And you could see Amazon is first on the right over the SE. So the 10s Max seems to be winning a little bit more here, but the SE right on its heels, which isn't bad for as old as it is in comparison. That was pretty much a draw there on eBay, not seeing too much of a difference on either. Now the 10s Max did load that link a lot faster though. Let's go into Slither 3, 2, 1 and see which one can open this first. And that is the 10s Max. Let's hit play against AI. And you could see a nice little performance on both of them. Let's go into Jetpack Joyride, three, two, one, and see which one is first. So the 10S Max in the lead, boom, over the SE. So here's where, you know, you're definitely gonna see a huge update is in your GPU performance. That is a big update for 10S Max users. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2. 
But I mean, I mean, these apps on iOS 12 on pretty much any of the iPhones SE and above, 6S and above, are still going to load relatively quickly here. But you've seen the 10s Max just leaps and bounds ahead of the SE there on Dead Trigger 2. Now you can see we're in the game and playing the game. The graphics feel a little bit smoother for the iPhone 10s Max. Just they just look better overall than the SE but the SE still plays them rather respectably smooth in comparison so if you're playing a game on here a lot smaller screen doesn't respond quite as well it's still very smooth but I'm going to have to give it to the 10s Max when it comes to all around gaming performance let's go into PUBG Mobile 3, 2, 1 and see how long it takes to get to the match screen I'm going to go ahead and speed it up and we'll see which one gets there I'll be back in a second All right, guys, so the iPhone XS Max was well in the lead over the SE. It's not so much ahead that you could, like, turn off the app, restart it, and lap the SE. It's not that much ahead. But it definitely was about five seconds or so to six seconds faster on the launch time. So definitely big load time improvements. And the phone doesn't get as hot when gaming, I've noticed, over the SE. The SE can get really hot, drain a lot of battery. A lot more efficient for gaming for the iPhone XS Max. Let's go into and Antutu benchmark you can see that's a win to the 10s max and you can see speed test three two one and you can see that is the se very slightly like micro millisecond whatever let's go into video shop and you can see that is the 10s max and you can go into camera 10s max first then the se slightly behind and imovie and you can see imovie microsecond faster millisecond faster for the iPhone XS Max. So after this single round of apps, I'm basically gonna say that the iPhone XS Max is definitely faster, but the SE is respectable on iOS 12. It was barely behind, not that much, considering it's $1,000 less. Okay, so here we are at multitasking. Let's see if either one will give us a reload here. Let's go into camera. Camera opens back up on both. What about video shop? You can see nothing, speed test, nothing. Let's go into Antutu benchmark. About the same, I think slightly to the 10X Max. Both were still at the match screen in PUBG. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2. Let's see if we get a reload here. Nothing really to speak of there. Let's go into Jetpack Joyride. You can see about the same on both. Slither. Reload here for the SE. So that's two gigabytes of RAM trailing behind that four. Let's go into eBay. You can see pretty close. Let's go into Amazon. And a little bit snappier for the 10s Max, but Amazon was pretty much opened on the SE at the same time. Prime Video, you can see about the same. What about YouTube? And YouTube about the same again. WhatsApp. WhatsApp with the reload for the SE. Instagram. So the SE just doesn't have the RAM to hold as many apps and to stay as efficient as the 10s Max when it comes to holding all of this data in the background. So definitely... If you want the more powerhouse phone that doesn't reload apps hardly ever, you're going to want the 10s Max in comparison. Calculator had that. Looked like that reloaded for the SE. So the multitasking round goes to the 10s Max, but again, I still think it's respectable how the SE did here. That wasn't that bad overall. I mean, it's still usable. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and test their internet speed. Let's go into apple.com, and you could see the SE keeps up just fine, pretty close there. And they loaded that website pretty much identically. So that Apple website loads very well for their own devices. Let's go into, how about we go over to yahoo.com, three, two, one. And you can see yahoo.com first here on the right, still loading over there for the iPhone SE. Let's go into the next one here. You can see scrolling about the same, zooming, not that much different at all. You just get a much larger, much more enjoyable browsing experience just because you have a much larger display now if you have a tablet and you like your one-handed sc that's fine too but for people who want all screen in a phone this one's your one you want right here so the iphone 10s max seems to be in the lead and it does it beats the se here on this little article i'm loading up and again pinch to zooming just fine there goes the se you just have to do a lot more scrolling and zooming on the se but pretty much identical internet performance safari is a super well optimized super smooth internet browser for both devices. All right, guys, so let's test the video rendering here in Video Shop, same one minute 4K 30 clip and see which one can render this out first. Three, two, go. See which one is faster to compile this video. Now it looks like the iPhone XS Max has the jump here 
significantly over the SE. And there you go. The iPhone XS Max, a 4K 30 clip, it's showing its muscle right here because 4K is some of the most premium video, the highest capacity like storage you can handle. So the iPhone XS Max showing its muscle right there. And that's where that A12 Bionic is really going to come into play. But you got to really think about how much are you doing this on a day to day. If you are, you definitely want a XS. So we're going to do an iMovie clip once the SE finishes up here. I don't think that's that bad. I mean, for as tiny as this phone is, that's still pretty cool that you can render out video pretty efficiently. Let's go into the iMovie and let's go into over here and let's go into save video. And we're going to save this guy in its highest 4K resolution. It's the same clip from Video Shop. Hold on. Let me go ahead and X that out. Went a little too fast there for the SE. Let's hit save video and let's do 4K. Three, two, one. See which one can export this first. Now, I expect similar results for the iPhone XS Max to win this test again. But this one should be a little closer as iMovie is the more optimized app for Apple devices. So let me speed this up and I'll be back in just a second when they are at the end of the render. Okay guys, so we're closing in near the end of the render. They're actually quite close here and they both export the movie at nearly the identical same time. So that might have been a video shop thing not being properly optimized for the SE. Who knows? Because in iMovie, the Apple app, 4K 30 clip, it's the same exact clip, basically identical. So props to the SE on that one. Of course, props to the XS Max, the beast phone. But still, that was pretty interesting. All right, so the final Geekbench scores are in. The SE's finishing up, and you could see that the iPhone XS Max single core is higher than the SE's multi-core. Let's not even talk about their multis. It's a blowout victory for the XS Max. But you've seen right here, Geekbench scores are cool and all, but really in the real world, you've seen that the SE is still a practical phone to use. It's still very usable in 2018. The XS Max showed its stuff in Video Shop. The SE came back in iMovie, and they kind of matched there. And uh, the iPhone XS Max in the games was ahead. So raw processing power, it's still the XS Max. Does it feel like $1,000 more than the SE? I think yes, because it's more modern. The screen is ginormous in comparison to the iPhone SE. But the SE did a good job versus Goliath here. David, you did a good job against Goliath. So anyway, what are your thoughts on this one? The SE versus the XS Max. Are you going to update? If you want to see a full comparison between these two, be sure to leave your comments down below hit the like button